What's up, everybody? Back for another live Monday a beer review. And today I will be reviewing a couple different beers from the Fuller's Brewery under the Fuller Smith and Turner PLC umbrella. And I have their Fuller's London Porter. And then off screen, I have their Fuller's Vintage Ale, the 2012 edition. So quite excited to get into these reviews. But before we do so, I have a few things to talk about, so I'll get right to it. Number one, if you're watching the replay of this review, in the description box, you should find timestamps to both of these reviews. Usually, when I incorporate two beers into a single review, the video is probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour long. So I understand people don't want to sit through that. So you can click on the timestamps for either of these reviews, jump right to the review, and you don't have to sit around and look at all the other stuff that I BS about. Of course, if you're watching this live, then you're stuck with me unless you just close the window or tab, which is probably highly recommended at this point. Anyway, number two, if you haven't been checking out the channel over the last month, each Monday I have been doing live beer reviews, usually two every single Monday. And the reason for that is because, A, it's a night in which I'm free and can do them. And number two, a lot of my beer tubing friends don't do anything on Monday nights when it comes to live streaming. Most of my friends uh, either live stream pretty much Tuesday through Saturday, you know, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So we're here Monday night going forward. I'm probably going to review a beer or two every single Monday. I might do some live vlogs, maybe even a live show. I don't know. I've been thinking about it some good ideas out there. So if you have any uh, suggestions for live reviews on Monday, feel free to throw them pretty much anywhere on my channel. I've had a couple good ideas so far. Rainier Air Parade said do Lefe, uh, Blonde, and, and the Brune. And uh, a couple other people have given me some ideas as well. I'm trying to do reviews that are pretty much easy to get for almost anybody. So if you're in the US, I'm trying to do national and regional breweries, and I'm also trying to do some imports like today's reviews that uh, everybody can get their hands on. Because if you're watching me live, I'd imagine you either wanna be able to get the beer or you've had the beer before, maybe a combination of both. So doing some hype local stuff or you know just hype stuff in general is probably not ideal for a live review. And number three, if you are in the comment section right now, I have not gandered over there yet, but if you are, I'll be reading comments all night long. So comment, about this beer, about any beer, whatever, I'll read them. Good interaction back and forth. I've had a really good turnout for most of my reviews that are live, so I hope this is the same, but I guess we will see. So I'll do a quick look at comments, see who's around here. We have Julian, Isaiah Roberts says, hey, Joe, good to see you again. What's up, Julian? Thanks for stopping by. We have Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews. He says, cheers, Joe. We have Ashley Sexton, Sexton Brewing. Check out his channel. Also check out Craig's channel, Kent Beer Reviews. He says, cheers of Joe and viewers. And then Paul from PA Brew News, baby. Dufted Paul says, cheers, brother. And he says, Hallmark Brew. These are all Hallmark Brews, no doubt. Check out Paul too. Paul actually has a 2012 version of Vintage Ale. I had no idea else I would have been like, let's do a duo review, but he's gonna review it on his channel or probably do some crazy vertical because that's, that's, what, that's what Paul does. And that's what Paul's known for. Crazy shit. Uh, we also have Drunken One says, cheers, everyone. What's up, Drunken One? Thanks for stopping by. We have Matt Albright says, cheers, Joe. I enjoy the Monday live stream. Well, thanks, Matt. I, I enjoy it too. I mean, it's I have time. Um, I'm going to, if people want to do duo reviews too on Mondays, I'm down with that too. We both want to be able to get the beer or need to be able to get the beer. And then obviously it has to be something that most people can get. So keep that in mind. Um, no jinx, Jeff. If you haven't checked out yesterday's beer mail from Jeff, uh, he hooked me up with a lot of Michigan barrel aged goodness and just a bunch of awesome beers. And generally says, "Good evening, everyone. What's up, Jeff? Thanks for stopping by." And uh, Julian says, "How's your weekend so far?" And everyone, it was great. And uh, it's Monday though, so it's never that great. But I'm doing live reviews, so yeah, baby. And then <laughs> Bumpy says, "Why doesn't Cindy B come on your lives?" I don't know, Bumpy. Let's hope. I guess that doesn't ever happen. I've heard some things. Um, and then Paul says, "Love, love, love my aged vintage ales." Yeah, uh, I've had this fresh, this specific vintage fresh. And I think I had the 13 and the 14, but I've never had one age, certainly not six and a half years. So anyway, I'm just going to leave the comments up as I continue to talk because, you know, I'll go, be, go back and forth to the comments. But yeah, so the first beer I'm reviewing is Fuller's London Porter. This is an English style uh, porter. It comes in at 5.4% alcohol by volume, 37 IBUs. And at the time of review, this bottle, I believe, is four and a half months old. That's because this has a best before November 1st of 2019. And I think all imports from Fuller's from their regular lineup. They give them a year uh, out for freshness. Now, here's the thing. This is four and a half months old. Is that the most ideal freshness to be drinking this beer? No. But I know a lot of uh, guys in the comments like Jeff and Matt and Paul would agree. To get imported beer relatively fresh in the States is very hard, especially for well-known beers. It's still that hard. 
I don't think a lot of um, places rotate their stock and refresh their stock that often because a lot a lot of people just don't buy these beers anymore. You can actually say that for a lot of American brews. Like, how fresh can you find the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, for instance, or like Lagunitas IPA or Samuel Adams Boston Lager? If you're buying a single or maybe just a six pack, sure you can probably find it super fresh in cases and twelve packs and whatnot. But when I go buy a single of this beer, if I can find this under six months old, I consider this an incredibly great win for me personally. So I'd be curious to know what you guys uh, think about that. I just, I feel like every time I go see an import, like Samuel Smith's uh, Oatmeal Stout I did last week, that beer was 10 months old. And I, I don't think I've ever seen it like fresher than six months. So I don't know. Anyway, um, let's go to the website because doing this live, I can just check the website real quick. Ingredients, water, al yeast, malts, brown chocolate, crystal, and pale hops, fuggles. 48.49 uh, calories for every 100 milliliters. So this entire bottle has about 160 calories. And I know probably none of you care, but considering that I'm still on my diet and losing weight, 160 calories is certainly extremely doable when it comes to this beer. All right, comments. We got, uh, we have everybody exchanging pleasantries between one another. Paul says, oldest I've had so far was a 2000 vintage ale. Nice. Craft Beer Pours, Brandon shows up, says, cheers, Joe, and chat. What's up, Brandon? Nice for you to stop by. This isn't like your chat, okay? There's not going to be 100 people here, Brandon, but I do appreciate you stopping by. Uh, we have Drunken One saying, uh, uh, Paul says, I prefer these out of the bottle. Something about the cans just didn't do it for me. And I could totally see that about a lot of these classic beers. It'd be weird, too, if like I posted today, Great Lakes Edmund Fitzgerald Porter. If that came in a can, I think I'd, be, I'd feel weird about it. I feel like that should be in a bottle too. Uh, Craig, Ken Beer Review says, is that a 330 milliliter London Porter? 500 mils over here. Yes, it is, Craig. It is a 11.2 fluid ounce bottle or 330 milliliter uh, bottle. So yeah, it looks beautiful. Anyway, I'm cracking it open now because it's time to drink it. So four and a half months old, like I said, not the most ideal freshness. Now, as far as this beer is concerned, I've had this numerous times, but I don't think I've had it in probably over five years. And that's just because like I talked about, and so many of these classic reviews, I just, there's so many new beers. I just really don't drink them all that often. So let's give it a pour. <laughs> now, one thing that I noticed about this beer is the color. And I don't know how it's going to come off on camera, but I'll tell you right now, in person, this poured out mostly like a very nice looking brown ale. Big. <clears throat> so again, I don't know how it's going to come off on camera. I guess I could check the feed here just to see what you guys are seeing in comparison to me. Let me do that real quick. Yeah, it looks black on camera, maybe not pitch black, but it looks black. Um, in, in in person, it's a really dark, dark, deep brown, mahogany, ruby red hints on the side. Had about a half finger of a straight up, I'd say tan head, creamy looking head. But it looks like a, again, it's an English porter, not an American porter. I don't think English porters are as dark, but then again, what do I know? I don't know why you're here watching me. That's how it goes. Let's get a nose on it. Slightly metallic in the nose. But there are a ton of like, hmm, like tons of like bittersweet baker's chocolate. Uh, what I'm getting in this, and I notice in English ale, uh, English porters as opposed to American porters is more of like a dark fruit component. Like there's a sweeter dark cherry, almost like raisiny kind of vibe to the nose. It could be the English ale yeast, prob probably what it is. Probably their ale yeast specifically. Yeah, chocolate, caramel, a little bit of toffee, a little bit of nuttiness, almost brown brown ale-esque, a little bit in the nose. Yeah, it smells pretty nice. As it opens up, the metallic uh, the met metal character on the nose is kind of fading uh, to the background and all those sweeter, you know, the sweeter, like, bittersweet chocolate. Well, I shouldn't say sweeter, bitter cheek. It's like sweet, dark chocolate, but bittersweet. It's kind of a little bit of a combination of both. It's not milk chocolate in here, for sure. But then you get that caramel toffee burnt sugar vibe. And there's a nice, like, floral, almost earthy aspect to the hop character in this one, too, is they're using Fuggles. So, Paul, I know you're all about the, uh, I know you're a little bit, a little bit about that earthiness, you and Lee. It just smells like so many well-made uh, porters in general, whether you want to say American or English. It just smells so well-made and robust. It smells very inviting. smells like it's going to be refreshing, despite the fact this is a darker beer. It just has all the characteristics. Um, go to comments real quick. Uh... Paul says, yeah, we get screwed generally on English ales with tiny U.S. bottle sizes. Now and then, you can find a proper sized bottle. Yeah, we we usually, when it comes to folders outside of the vintage ales, we just get the 330s. I, I don't think I, I do see some of the bigger, uh, Samuel Smith has some of the bigger, I think, 500 mils, but most of them are also 330s. Or, are those actually 12 ounces or 11.2? 
I think the Sam Smiths are actually 12 ounces, 355s. I, I, I could be wrong on that. Paul says, I'm finally off for a day, so loving life. What's not to love about a day off? Uh, Jesse says, Joe needs a few more thumbs. I, I have two. Oh, you're talking about the thumbs up. Thanks, Jesse. And yeah, wow, it's up to eight now. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Uh, Ashley says, I've always attributed a more pronounced hot presence to an American porter, whereas the English porter have more of an earthy bitterness with a heavier malt flavor. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. And that's kind of what I'm getting in the nose here. And look, again, I'm kind of happy that I'm doing this tonight and I just got done doing the Emma Fitzgerald Porter from Great Lakes, which I posted today. That one definitely had more of like a pronounced hop uh, bitterness, both in the taste, but also on the nose. This one just, it's very subdued and it's more earthy. So I think you hit the nail on the head, Ashley. Ashley knows what the fuck he's talking about. He's a home brewery. He knows what he's doing. Uh, Eric Gilbert shows up to troll and says, British, por British Porter is hot garbage. You know, it's funny because uh, he just did a whole list on Facebook about all these great imports, and this just so happened to be on the list. I don't know. I guess I guess he's lying to me. S stop trolling, Eric. Um, thanks, Julian, for stopping by. He said he wanted to stop in, say hi, and hope you guys have a good night. I love you guys. All right, take it easy, Julian. Go have fun playing video games, man. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Paul says, I love those potato skin, earthy, and copper coin goodness. Yeah, maybe the metallic has given me a little copper coin in here as well. Maybe just, you know, again, uh, it definitely has a slight metallic nose to it, but again, that's starting to fade. Anyway, two more comments and then I will get into it. Alex Dudick says, long time fan, but first time watching live. Long time listener, first time caller. Keep up the great work, man. Cheers. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like people you know, showing up for the live reviews because to me, when I watch live reviews or I watch live streams, you get to interact with the person, you, you know, especially if they're reviewing something or drinking something that you've had before. It's all what it's about. Eric Gilbert says, you Americans don't get pints, suckas. Come on, Eric. Of course we don't get pints. And then uh, Bumpy Road says the lead singer of Garbage was all right. Sure, was it Shirley Manson? Pretty sure it was Shirley Manson. Yeah, she was all right. Anyway, cheers, everybody. Let's get into it. I mean, damn, son. Yeah, the first thing I notice about this is, and I know it's 5.4%. It's an English porter. Paul, it's a bit thin. Eric, it's a bit thin. It's a bit thin. This is like lower side of medium body, higher side of white body. It doesn't, I want a little bit more out of the body. Just saying. I'm just saying. I'll start with the uh, cons to this beer for me personally. Outside of that, this is pretty much, I think, what you want out of an English porter. So like I said, lower side of medium body, higher side of light. Mouthfeel, slightly soft and smooth, but it does have some effervescent qualities to it. It's carbonated. It's a beer. You expect it. Right in front, you're here with a lot of malty goodness, uh, bittersweet chocolate, caramel toffee, getting a pretty big uh, dark fruit presence like I was getting the nose. More to the sweeter dark, dark cherry, almost raisin-esque vibe. Passes through the palate. It actually dries out quite, quite well. This is like a semi-dry finish. And then you get a little bit of that earthy, almost floral hop component on the back end. It balances out that sweetness, that malt sweetness in the front end to the back end. What you're left for is a beer that you could probably... I don't know, crush 7,000 bottles of this, not literally, but you could easily polish off. Are these not, one question, are these in four packs or six packs? I can't remember if these are four or six packs. I know, uh, Craig, you should know, and probably Paul, I think, you know, Paul has probably drank 7,000 of these himself. Um, Paul says, tasty red ale with Shirley Manson. And Paul says, it is a bit thin. And uh, Craig from Camp Beer says, it's damn tasty. A bumpy road says microwave it to bring out more flavor. This is uh, room temperature. This is like 60, whatever it is in here, 63, 64. So it's not microwave, but it's, you know, it's cellar temp or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, or drinkable. Uh, Paul says, it's a brew to crush into slack and industrial for industrial thirst. Six packs. And then the party source, J.O. shows up. What's up, J.O.? He says four packs, I believe. Yeah, I want to say this is four packs in the States, but maybe they do four and sixers. I don't know. Regardless, I forgot what I paid for this money, about a couple bucks for this bottle. It's relatively well priced. I want to say a six pack is like, or, or I would say a six pack is probably in the $12 range. A four pack would probably be in the 10 to 11. I don't know. Craig says we only get the 500 mil single bottles. That's all you get. So you don't even, they don't even sell them at anything. Paul says the cans were four packs. Yeah. I don't know what the price point on this is, but you can all get it. So if you see it in your neck of the woods, post in the comments, like whenever you see this and let me know what the price is. I don't remember. I wish it's one thing I need to do better with my reviews is the value or the price. Cause so many times I buy these beers, I'm buying, you know, half dozen to a dozen different beers and I'm not really 
caring too much about a 20 cents of difference, but I know a lot of people out there, it does matter big time. Uh, Bumpy says he only sees fullers and singles. Okay. That makes sense. Anyway, this is your quintessential English Porter. I mean, I, there's not much more to it. Uh, you could drink this. This would be like the perfect pub beer to start your night. You know, if you want something that's going to be relatively easy to drink, uh, not going to smack your palate with a bunch of different, you know, crazy flavors. I mean, this is the thing. It is complex, but the, all the characters are very nuanced and just minute, but there is a nice complexity to this one. But English porters are not, you're not going to sit there for half an hour and talk about them like I am right now because I like to talk and I'm terrible at it. But yeah, this is just a really easy going English porter. Paul says the cans are 16 ounces in the States. Eric Gilbert says, I crushed a couple million pints of London Porter. Uh, Craig says, uh, went on an offer. I can get four bottles for six pounds. Wow. That's a great, uh, that's a great deal. J.O. says he loves the old engine oil. Yeah, that was a good one. A anyone else ever tried that? Yeah. And, don't they, and isn't the, uh, what you call it, the uh, Harvestins, uh, the, 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 what you call it, or the barrel aged versions of that, right? The, um, why can't I, the Ola Dubs, right? But yeah, anyway, rating on this stylistically, this is, I mean, this is, is this not the classic English porter? Is this not it? I mean, if not, it's one of them. Did be a four, seven, five out of five, five out of five all day long. I mean, probably hard pressed to find one better than this. I just, in my opinion, personal rating though, this is where it's going to go a little bit sideways just because, I mean, it was like Emma Fitzgerald I did for from Great Lakes, gave that a 4.25 out of five for personal taste. Uh, but again, for American Porter, that's almost a five out of five. So I'm probably going to go right in the realm for this one. I think this deserves a 4.25 out of five for me. I think it's a damn good beer. I think you, if you put this side by side uh, with a Edmund Fitzgerald or like a Deschutes Black Butte or a Founders Porter, you will see the differences between an English Porter and an American Porter. As Ashley said earlier, I feel like these have a little bit more malt forward components to it. They're also, I think, a bit sweeter because of that. And there's more dark fruit from this alley yeast. I, I just, again, the, the sweet dark cherry and like the raisin, I don't really get that a lot in just regular American porter. So with English porter style, I think that's kind of one of the characteristics that kind of shine in these beers. So yeah, 4.25 out of 5 for uh, Fuller's London Porter. Stylistically, that's like a 4.755. I mean, you can't you can't really get much better than that, in my opinion. Um Paul says Ola Dub on cask was amazing. I, I'd imagine it was. And like proper cask, not like most of the American breweries that, oh, this is a cask beer. And then you're like, no, 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 it's not. Bumpy says he's only had the ESB and London's Pride. Both of those are really tasty beers. Again, those are the quintessential beers within those styles, in my opinion. Like they, not necessarily, I would say like they're the, the best within those styles, but they're the classic and they're kind of like the, you know, the standard um, that uh, so many people compare it to. So, I, I mean, those are, those are great beers. Uh, Eric Gilbert says single pint cans of bottles Ontario, like 350. That's like 12 cents American based on the conversion right there. <laughs> uh, Jeff says, been a long time since I've had one of these, going to have to revisit. Jeff, you do. Listen, I drank that oatmeal uh, stout from Sam Smith last uh, week, and I was just absolutely blown away about how delicious that beer was. Now, I was aged 10 months, but I, I don't care. I don't remember that beer being that great for my palate. Like, it was a good beer, but it was amazing last year or last week. And this beer, it's not amazing for my palate, but 4.25 out of 5, I feel, is a really, really fair score, and I think it deserves it, and I think I enjoy it to that level. But if you haven't had this in a long time, like I haven't had this well over five years, owe to yourself to pick it up, especially if you like just base porters. Um, J.O. says, what is your perfect beer? That's, that's, that's a tough question, J.O. I don't, I don't know if I have a perfect beer, but, um, so, some of my five out of five beers would be something, uh, like a long of a, just a well-made English barley wine or barrel aged barley wine, big, beautiful Imperial stout, or like a barrel aged Imperial stout beers of that nature for me are kind of where I, I go five out of five, seven, four, seven, five out of five. Well, like Firestone Walker Sukaba is probably my favorite beer of all time. And that beer is a five out of five all day, every day, because uh, it's an amazing beer. Uh, Paul says, I want more malt and subtle fruit tones from the English ale yeast. British ale is, is, ale is just fantastic, at least for me. Gotcha. He says, I had their core range on cask at their uh, Birmingham's uh, Fuller's Pub, a beautiful place I'd imagine. Uh, Bumpy said, a British ale yeast never finished the job the few times I've used it. And then uh, Ken Beer refuses Auburn traditional English porter. Hmm. Yeah, well, uh, well, uh, what did you rate this? Because I remember, Craig, I remember you you reviewed this late last year, and I was surprised that you reviewed it and you hadn't reviewed it then. You gave it like a 425, right? Or 
four out of five or something. I know you really enjoy this. Eric Gilbert says a hazy pastry slushed out from other half. Yeah, those do get high marks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyway, Fuller's Lawn Reporter, 4.25 out of five for me personally. Five out of five, probably in the style. I mean, I don't think you can get much better than that. So let's just put this to the side and then bring out the big boy. The uh, the star of the show, so to speak, we have Fuller's Vintage Out. And this is the 2012 uh, <clears throat> edition. This beer comes in at 8.5%. Well, first off, this is what is this technically classified as? An English Old Ale, I believe. 8.5% alcohol by volume, 40 IBUs at the time of review. They do not have... They do not have a, a date on the bottle. They, they are numbered. The beers are numbered. But I'm pretty sure, Craig, you can correct me or anybody that knows, but I'm pretty sure the vintage ales are released every fall. So you're looking at six and a half years for this bottle. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's fucking pretty, pretty well aged, I'd say. You know what I mean, bros? So – I can't wait to crack into this one. Let me go comments first. We'll, we'll do the website thing. Paul says it's an 8 out of 10 overall all day, talking about the English Porter. I totally agree. Chris from Off the Town shows up and says, I love you. I meant the beers. Thanks, Chris. And then uh, Paul says, hope it aged well for you, brother. Um, Eric Gilbert says, damn, son. And then everyone's just saying hi to Chris because he showed up. So let me read the <clears throat> let me read the website real quick, and then I will read the bottle because it has some interesting – Interesting. Uh, actually, let me read the bottle first. You know why? Because there's a little bit of discrepancy between the bottle and the actual uh, website. And I'm looking at the 2012 web, uh, website too. So it says the 2012 Vintage Ale, our 16th, is brewed with three of this year's finest hop varieties, including Golding's award-winning uh, Sovereign and Target hops. These combine with their unique yeast and organic barley grown by Sir James Fuller on the Nelson Park Estate result in a wonderful limited edition brew that has a luxurious flavor. Individually packed, the number of this bottle is one of only 100, uh, 125,000 produced. Although we are obliged to state a best, bore, uh, best before date of 2015, like a fine wine or whiskey, this mellow golden ale will improve with age for many years. Uh, being bottle conditioned, this beer will form a natural sediment, so pour carefully, blah, blah. Yeah, so it's bottle conditioned. I'm going to pour very carefully so I don't get a lot. I'll pour in the sediment at the end because, you know, you got to try out the sediment. So anyway, on the website, it says water, ale yeast, malts they're using are crystal and pal. Now, again, this is the 20... 2012 website from Fuller's themselves. They just said they're using what is it, a Sovereign, Target, and Goldings. On here it says Challenger, Denali, Fuggles, Goldings, North Down, Organic First, Gold, and Target. Yo, where the Sovereign House? Uh, unless one of those are, words were named or maybe I'm confusing them. I don't really care. But come on. Anyway, let's crack this open. Bust it right off there. Yeah, we're good to go. Such a classy, classy, uh, I didn't show you guys the box, but the box is so classy, has stuff on the back. I mean, when you're going to do like a vintage ale and you do it once a year, this is the way you got to set it up for presentation, in my opinion. Anyway, let's get a pour on it. Oh, man, that's, that's super. Hey, the baby, the new new style IPA, Dustin Rose says it is, baby. All right, we'll go like that. Okay, that should be plenty fine. So first off, this beer is freaking beautiful. Absolutely beautiful beer. Has this, I mean, it's like this dull, like burnt orange, almost like just really hazy copper color. It looks beautiful. Honestly, it looks absolutely gorgeous in person. I have no idea how it's coming off a of camera, but this beer looks fucking beautiful. And it has about a finger of a straight up tan head, super creamy looking, absolutely just beautiful. It just looks amazing. Yeah, it looks like, honestly, I, I always feel like, Old ales are kind of always darker than this, but this is like the proper like barley wine looking barley wine, old ales, whatever. It's kind of similar. Uh, but yeah, that just looks like a freaking absolutely amazing beer. Honestly, let me get a, let me get a nose on it. <sighs> Read some comments here while I just, uh, you know, just, you know, just settle down a little bit. Uh, we have, we have, uh, uh, Chris says hi to everyone. Uh, Eric Gilbert says bro love. Yeah. And then Ashley is trying to tell other people like cheer, uh, like Jesse to say uh, to use different alleys, use Dan Star, not the Oh, the homebrew talk is fantastic. I love it. Uh, 
Craig says he had the London Porter three times since 2014, 425, 425, and 45. So appropriate. Uh, Paul says, wildflower honey and orange marmalade all day. Don't let Matt hear you about the orange marmalade. Don't let him hear you. Todd shows up, says, cheers, Joe. Tears, uh, che tears. I'm crying. I am a little bit because it smells so beautiful. But cheers, Todd. F -f 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 420 says, sup, sons. 420. He was on Rod J's beer flow show. Well, actually, the... It was the Saturday night, just like birthday hangout for Rod. And uh, apparently he subbed to my channel. So thank you, 420. That's on you, though. You're, you're going to have a terrible time here. Uh, Jeff says, I've never had this one. Man, I cannot, I've tried to find the last two years of it. They don't sell in my area, at least from what I've seen. Chris says, sorry, my ju ju juvenile palate loves it. And then Jesse says, I'd like to have an authentic old ale. Todd says, hammered already. No, I drank a half of the London Porter at 5.4%. I'm not. I'm just so excited about this beer, Todd. Anyway, the nose is amazing. There is so much like toasted, almost like, like burnt white bread, maybe even a little bit of brown bread. Um, wildflower honey, Paul says. Yeah, I can definitely see. Actually, quite a, quite a huge waft of honey notes, sweeter, like sweeter confectionery sugar, but very robust and complex, not like just generic table sugar or something. Yeah, this this has orange marmalade characters for day uh, for days. Sweeter orange peel, sweeter. It's not like the juice of orange. If you get like actual orange marmalade, it's this orange peel, and it just has tons of sweetness. It's like orange marmalade on on basically toast, more or less white toast. But there then there's like these nice like underlying berry notes too. Oh man, this is caramel toffee as well. There's there's like a slight, it's more earthy than anything, but this is really, at six and a half years, this is very sweet in the nose. This is the aromatics are screaming sweetness, not so much hot bitterness at all. This doesn't have a balance to it in the nose, but it doesn't matter because it's so complex and just highly enjoyable. <sighs> Holy fuck. I mean, so <laughs> I don't remember what I thought about this fresh because it was six and a half years. It was probably six years ago I had this one. I remember it being really good, but I do think it had more of like a, a balance between it. It definitely had a little bit more bitterness. It did not have the complexity within the malt profile of this one like it has right now. Like there's, you could probably pick out 20 different characters and you probably wouldn't be wrong because it's your palate and you're not wrong anyway, but I'm just saying there's so much going on here. <sighs> Maybe even like a slight molasses too, as Terry K beer goggles used to say some black strap molasses dude this fucking just listen listen i don't see this beer anymore and like a half dozen people in the comments are like i can't see it the Eng the uh, the uh canadian guys got this this showed up in canada at the lcbo last year the day i think they got the 2018 version and i've not seen this in the states for like two or three years i bought this locally six and a half years ago I haven't seen it in a long time. I think 2015 was the last one I saw. Anyway, I'm going to sit here and stop drinking. Let's just say this smells absolutely fantastic. English old ale, English barley wine, whatever. This smells super complex and absolutely delicious. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Drinking this, honestly, this is going to sound really stupid to you guys watching. Really stupid. I just got goosebumps taking a sip of this because that's how fucking delicious this beer is. Holy shit, is this great. This is a great beer. Oh, my God. Everything in the nose trans translated extremely well. It's even more complex in the taste. The first thing I got was, so Paul said orange marmalade, right? And I... I said that was very similar to just not just straight orange marmalade, but orange marmalade on actual like white toast. But in the taste, I am getting like not straight jammy vibes, but like you just maybe dropped a few fresh berries on top of that orange marmalade on that toast. And when I first tasted that, that was what I got the first hit on the palate. And it was just amazing. Tons of caramel toffee. Blackstrap molasses, treacle, everything that you want to say when it comes to complexities within sweetness is in this glass. It has a really nice bready, biscuity malt component. I, well, I, I keep on saying malt component. Everything's basically malt-driven in this beer. Here's the thing, though. 
I thought it was going to be super sweet based on the nose, like so many barley wines when they age is all sweetness, sweetness. This actually dries out. It dries out quite a bit actually on the back end. There's not really a lot of hop character, any really any hop character left, but it has such a substantial dryness and a little ever so slight kiss of alcohol on the back end that this is one of the most drinkable eight plus percent beers. Now I've had 10, 12, 13% Imperial Stouts and crazy shit nowadays that, yeah, it's easy to drink. This just makes it even easier, but more enjoyable to drink because of that uh, slight dryness. Well, not slight, actually big dryness and the slight alcohol stringency on the back of the palate. All right, let me read some, uh, let me read some fucking comments here. Cause instead I'm just geeking out on this and going nuts. Um, Matt Albright says he hasn't been able to find this one in his area. That sucks. Yo, that sucks. Alex uh, said you should do an old ale theme week. If I could find enough old ales, I got a couple Coonan old ales, but like I'd, man, if I could find seven, I would. I, if I could, I mean, maybe I will be able to. I don't know. You got like curmudgeon from founders, but I don't know. There's a lot. Four Choice says, haha, I doubt that. Here, news here at my spot for the Heineken import pint. 10 packs are closed out here for $5.99, but all six of them. That's a Rod J deal, is what that is. Uh, Chris says BA 101 cover. This was fantastic in our opinions. Yeah. If I would could have got it, I would have done it. Uh, Craig says marmalade on rye. I could see the rye. I'm not really getting, here's the thing. I'm not getting any spiciness in here. I, I could see that though. But for me, I, I feel like if it was uh, present on the palate, maybe when fresh or when this beer is fresh, I could see it just aged. It kind of doesn't have any spiciness. 420 says, Joe, that shit looks awesome. Says hi to Todd. Chris says, what's next week's beer. There is no next week's beer. Come on, Chris. Um, Paul says, treacle goodness. Chris says, after chat on your channel. Maybe after chat on someone else's channel. I'm not going to bring you crazy fools onto my channel. I'll ruin it more so than it already is. 420 says, got those Guinness Fornies still and some Heine import pints. Uh, import pints. Yeah, I mean, that's the way to go. You're going to have a good time, especially at Raj A Deals. Paul says, I bought three four-pack vintage ale kits that had the 09, 11, 12, and 13 in each kit. God damn. Chris says, woohoo, after chat on Joe's channel. I'm going to need you to settle down, Chris. Okay. You're, you're, you're red bearding up my channel right now. <laughs> Eric Gilbert says, LCBO is only in Ontario. Geez, you Americans. Yeah, whatever. Listen, I talk to mostly on uh, Ontario residents from Canada. Okay. Like yourself, Eric Gilbert. So when I say Canadians, I'm being Ontario. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 420 says, Joe, fax me a taste cup, please. Yeah. Todd says, is it great? Is it? Yes, it is. Uh, Eric Gilbert starting the A and 420 sons. Todd laughs at that. Puppy Rose says, LCBO, is that a last weekend gay choose your own sex thing? I don't know. Eric might think it is at this point. Um, nothing wrong with that. 420 says, Honey Import, pint 10 packs on F and sale like a champ here. Son! Paul says, cheers. Chris says, so hashtag smooth. JO shows up and says, okay, I'm back. Had to take care of the kid. And then JL says, if you haven't hit that like button, there are a lot of people hitting the like button. That's impressive. I thank each and every one of you. Paul says, it's more savory than most huge imperial stouts. Alex Duty says, a founder's curmudgeon versus North Coast old stock versus Bell's third coast old I'll throw down and get trash. If I did that during a live review, I'd probably die. It'd make, it'd make for probably a very interesting live um Live review. Let me go back uh, into the taste here. Uh, Jeff says, putting this on my wish list. Jeff, if you see this, grab it. Now, again, I, you're probably not going to see a six and a half year old bottle, but Paul, who lives literally in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania and he gets everything at PA Freshness, he found, like you said, the, the four packs of 09 to 12 and he bought three of them. So, like, you know, maybe, maybe Paul can work out a trade and you can send him some barrel aged Michi uh, Michigan goodness because I know he would be down. Uh, 420 says, I got permission to take a vid of my spot with our vintage selection. We'll post soon. Awesome. I'm going to have to sub back to you, 420. I didn't know you did videos or if you were going to post anything. So Todd says, just subscribe, J-O. Nice. Paul says, but where's the apple brandy? For fuck's sakes, Paul. Let me get back into this. All right. So I didn't even talk about the body. Body is like higher side of medium, lower side of full body. It's perfect. I wouldn't want this any thicker. I don't know, Paul, if you thought you know a lot of the vintages were thin. This isn't thin, but it's 8.5%, so I'm not expecting a 10 11% viscosity like you would get out of a beer that with that level. But I'd say lower side of full body, higher side of medium. Definitely has a little bit of heft behind it. And then the mouthfeel, it's, it's soft, smooth. It's definitely lost a little bit of carbonation, but I think that adds to the experience of the beer. Like I feel if this had more carbonation. Again, I wish I remembered what this freaking tasted like fresh. 
feel like the 20, the 2012 fresh certainly wasn't as impactful as it is right now because I'm going to down this. I just want to sit here and just drink the rest of this, not even talk, not even. Chris says an ASMR Jill would be sexy. Are you, are you saying I should, uh, I should probably start? All right, I'm not going to do that. Uh, we have, wow, Craig says this is currently 100 pounds a bottle, the 2012 vintage. Well, I wish you would have told me that, Craig, because then I could have just pawned this off on somebody. You know what I mean? Actually, I'd rather drink this and get a hundred bucks. Well, I got it'd be what like a buck, buck twenty, buck thirty American. Um, Eric Gilbert says, "Sons never gets old." It doesn't. Sons is the the way I'm saying it. I feel like you have to say it like that. You can't just be like, "What's up, sons?" Yeah, what's up, sons? Otherwise, it's what are you doing with your life? Uh, <laughs> four twenty says, "Hundred quid a bottle." Yeah, hundred quid a bottle is fucking insane. Four twenty says, "Old stock twenty twelve is at my spot." Is that any good? You fucking pick all of them up. It's old stock's an awesome, awesome beer, and aged it's even better. I don't think I've ever had. I think I maybe have had one that was like five or six years old. I I would at least grab one, two of them at least. Um, Paul says it's damn near perfect, aged in almost every single way. Are you talking about this beer specifically, Paul? Uh, J.O. says, thank you, Todd, because Todd subscribed to him. And then Jesse says, your mouth likes it, Joe. And I fucking love it. <laughs> Chris said, just got goosebumps for ASMR, Joe. I'm going to need you to settle down, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I, there's not much more to say about this. It's fucking phenomenal. Listen. I know all the Americans that are watching right now outside of Paul probably haven't seen it recently. Probably can't get your hands on it. At least not the 2012, maybe not even fresh bottles. Like I said, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the last three vintages of it. So it has to be available somewhere in the, um, somewhere in the, in the U S fresh. Uh, I did talk to local bottle shop here. One of my favorites, Premier Gourmet. I actually was talking to the beer manager this weekend about it when I was picking up the London Porter. And I was like, man, you didn't get any vintage ales this year. And he said, I can't get it anymore. Now, this is Premier Gourmet, and Paul can attest to this, is one of the best, has one of the best selections of import products in probably New York State, certainly in the Western New York area. I mean, he's got some crazy, like, 15-year-old bottles of crazy just Imperial this, Imperial that, English ales, all kinds of Belgian beers, just all kinds of crazy, crazy imports. If he can't get his hands on it, then I don't, I don't think too many people in New York State can, because that's insane. Um but yeah, I mean, if you can get any vintage of this, grab two of them, sit one down, drink one. I mean, they they have to put a three-year limit on it, like, you know, best before 2015. These can go, like Paul can attest to, like 10, 15, 20 years. So yeah, anyway, um, God damn, there's so many comments. Uh, <clears throat> Craig says six six pounds a bottle, six quid a bottle fresh. That's I think that's probably the same. I think I paid like eight to 10 bucks American for this when I bought it fresh. Paul says he bought the 2000 vintage at 1199 a bottle found they sell for 500 quid a bottle in the UK. God damn. You could have just made tons of, you could have paid for your UK trip, Paul. Uh, Chris says chug, chug, chug. I'm not chugging this, Chris. You, you, you're an animal. You're an animal, Chris. Eric Gilbert says cuvee son. Here's the thing. Cuvee son. I see. I just told, I just broke my own rules. I said, you have to say son certain way. And I said, son, the douchebag way. Anyway, I'm not cuveeing this. All right. This is too good to be fucking ruining. I don't want to ruin the fucking three, two ounces I have in my cup to cuvee it, Eric Gilbert. Not happening. 420 says, well, six quid isn't bad, but loads of difference, I bet. Jesse says, I think I saw it in a book once. <laughs> is that where you saw Jesse in a book? Uh, Craig says, nice to Eric uh, about the cuvee. Not happening. Uh, Paul says, it's a waste to drink them earlier than five years old. I, I can see what you mean. Like I said, I had this fresh, not nearly as good as it is right now. You know, fucking fuck off with your horn. Um, Paul says it's a waste to drink them earlier than five years old. I already read that. I just realized I read that. The horn out there. I'm gonna go out there and just fucking choke that guy out. Uh, or maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, Eric Gilbert says I would love to see that. LOL. He would love to see the cuvee. It's not happening. Uh, Chris says common overload. Yes. 420 says just rang up my spot. Old stock 2012 is on clearance for 3.99 a bottle. Where the fuck? You're in Vegas, aren't you? 420. That's insane. Three ninety nine a bottle. You better go buy at least a couple of them. Paul said, "I had them drank before I found that out." Sadly, yeah. If you ever get your hands on any more, you can just pay for all the piss ups you ever wanted. Four twenty says, "My son said, sup dads, sup dads, sup sons." Anyway, uh, I didn't rate this, and the reason I didn't rate this is because 
look, ratings don't matter. And I say this so many times, and I know some people will disagree. Ratings don't matter. This is my rating, right? Listen, it's aged. You probably can't compare this to a uh, fresh bottle. I know you can't, but I'm just going to say the Fuller's Vintage Ale 2012. J.O., you were asking me what earlier, what is your perfect beer? Well, within this style and what my taste buds perceive coming from this glass, the Fuller's Vintage Ale 2012 edition gets a 5 out of 5, both style and both personal preference, because this is a fucking fantastic beer, sons! Fantastic beer. Five out of five all fucking day long. I, I drink this. I don't want to drink. I just want to take my time with it, knowing that, A, it's 100 quid a bottle in the UK and I can't fucking get it anymore. And B, I just, I want to sit here and sip on it. It's so, it's so complex, but still easy to drink. There's so much shit going on here. Every single taste, I'm getting something different. Sometimes orange marmalade on toasted white bread. Sometimes that slight jammy berry thing. Other times, big caramel and toffee and molasses. It's just, it's fucking extremely well made. You cannot, you cannot tell me. Well, you could because everybody's pal is different. But for me, I cannot tell you that this is not a perfect beer for what they're going for and what I enjoy in a beer. So yeah, five out of five. Eric Gilbert says, not as good as the 2017 Hardy Sons. Well, here's the thing, Eric Gilbert. We're going to do that on, I'm um, pretty sure we're going to do that on Share a Beer. And I can get my hands on the Hardys here locally. So, yeah, I'm hoping that I can jump on that uh, beer analysis because I would like to see how this compares. I do have a 96 Thomas Hardy in my cellar and a 2008 Thomas Hardy. I was going to do a side-by-side, -side, but I got to share those with somebody. Um, JL says, let me guess this one. LOL. Yeah, this is a perfect beer. Uh, Jesse says, what's up 420 son? <laughs> He's shouting out 420 son. No, you can't beat that. Uh, Chris says, perfect sons. And then Jeff says, damn son, a perfect five. Yeah. I mean, if you guys can get this, get it. I mean, I, there's not much more to say about it. 420 says, he says, this place looks like Mars. Ha ha. He is visiting from Georgia. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. There's not much more to say about this one. So, give listen, you guys, there's 14 people watching. I appreciate it. have no idea why. But um, let me know. Let me know uh, what you guys else you want me to see. I, I, like, I like doing these reviews, the longer ones, where I can drink two beers from the same brewery. And I can, you know, A, grab a couple, sit down, do a 45-minute, hour-long review and chat, whatnot. This is a lot of fun. I mean, last week I did the separate videos, which were fine, but I prefer the longer ones. I will say, I do think for my 300th review, which might coincide potentially with my one anniversary on here, I am going to do, and this is going to be a fun night where I'm going to probably get shit-faced, but I'm going to do Deschutes Black Butte 30th anniversary, 30th anniversary, 300th review, just add an extra zero, and I'm going to do the 2015 abyss or 14 i forget which one i have i'm gonna do both of those in a single review and i'm probably gonna get paul levels of fucking shit face and it should be a lot of fun that's what i that's what i think i feel like i'm gonna do but if there's anything you guys want to see like I, I mean i obviously a lot of national breweries from be shared in nevadas to your new belgium to your bells your founders your whoever's just let me know uh ray i prayed said left a brune and blonde at some point but uh, I'm up for suggestions. I'm trying to do live reviews that aren't crazy. Um, Joe, your subpar content is, uh, he said, subpar content is superpower. I see what he did there. You're still wrong, 420. And that's the only time I'll say you're wrong. It, it's your opinion. You're still wrong. My content shit. But it's okay. Uh, so if you guys have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, you know, put it in the, you know, whatever. Uh, Jeff says uh, in the whatever, just, just throw it wherever the fuck you want on my channel. I don't know. Uh, Jeff says uh, the Black Butte 30th anniversary is a tasty beer from the shoots. Yeah, I've had two or three of the anniversary beers. I wish I could have could get the base beer because I think that base beer and then doing the anniversary would be fun. We don't get to shoots in New York at all, which is kind of shitty because I like to shoots. But I do have a Black Butte 30th that I got from, um, where was it? Erie, Pennsylvania, when I was there about six months ago. And then I have an abyss, an old ass abyss that I'm going to get into it. Uh, Bumpy Road, Jesse says, idea, Joe's best barrel, same beer, Asian, different barrels. Which one you like the most? Yeah, I'd have to find, like, I, I wish I could get some of the abyss. Um, I wish I could get the abyss uh, 
the abyss different didn't they do i think they did brandy they did like three different variants of scotch one chris says paul level killing hookers level sweet you know that's not that you know that's not a level i mean it is a level it's the only level that no one can attain except for paul at this point uh <laughs> jo says i volunteer myself for hardy uh, I can come see you. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. If I come down and visit Rajay at some point and meet up with Todd and everything, and it's going to happen at some point, Jail, we're going to stop by and we're going to do some duo reviews in your, in your, uh, in your place. It's going to be great. I'm going to shop, buy all the beer. Should be fun. Uh, Four choices. Mirror Pond is money too. I like Mirror Pond as well. I like Fresh Squeeze is another one. Eric Gilbert says I, I'm sure that Deschutes is available at the LCBO. The Black Butte was. I'm not sure if it is anymore. Ashley says Black Beauty is available in six packs. Well, fuck me. Maybe I need to go up to the fucking Canada and grab one of those. I, I didn't see them last time. Was that because I was in the the, the font? Was, where was I? Was I in Font Hill, Ashley, when I went to that uh, LCBO down the street from Cayman Kettle? Uh, Alex says the National Distro Shelf reviews are blast. Easier for us to connect and enjoy than stuff we have no chance of getting. That's true. The Deschutes, the 30th anniversary, I feel like Deschutes, don't, don't they get pretty much, I don't say national, but they're they get in a lot of different states. You got there has to be twenty plus at this point. Um, Eric Gilbert says nineteen ninety a six hundred fifty milliliter bottle for what? Eric Gilbert for what? That's a lot. Better not be for a regular black butte. Butte four twenty says you guys are welcome in Vegas. Just fire up the G six GS six and fly down. Yeah, just that's how we roll. Joe says I'll give you a tour and do a quick review with you. Oh, we, yo, when I do a reviews, they're not quick. Jail. It's, then they're not quick. I know you want like three minute reviews, but we're gonna have to up it to about. 20. Uh, Ashley says, yes, you were, sir. Yes, I was. I didn't see Deschutes Black Butte. I would have bought some. Uh, Paul says, age mirror, mirror all day. And then Eric Gilbert says, son, uh, mirror, mirror. Didn't they, didn't they do a different version? They have the, they have the pal but didn't they do like a big amped up version of it? Jesse says, you have to arm wrestle Chelsea Manning to get the shoots. I'd probably win. I would think. Uh, Eric Gilbert says XXX Black Butte 30. Well, you guys actually get the Deschutes 30th anniversary in Canada, and I can't get it in New York? Fuck you guys. I mean, you guys are awesome, but still fuck you. Uh, 420s laughs at <laughs> shit Jesse for needing to arm wrestle. Todd says, just saw the Rattlesnake Fry commercial. LOL. Yeah, fuck. The, it's the Rattlesnake Fries, Tom, uh, Todd. It's the Rattlesnake Fries, son. Oh, yeah, Mirror Mirror is the barrel-aged barley wine. The Mirror Pond is the palette. Yeah, I didn't, no, Mirror Mirror is fucking fantastic. I have, I have, this is what I have from Deschutes in my cellar. I have the Abyss, it's the 2014, and then I have the Stoic, the 2015 as well. So that should be fun. And then 420 says, Todd, isn't that funny? So how much rattlesnake is in it? All right, I'm going to have to cut you guys off. This is, go, this is going Eric Gilbert territory. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, aged in eight in wine and whiskey cast, son. And uh, Chris says, drink the rest, Joe, online. No, I'm going to drink this offline and enjoy every second. Fuck you, Chris. Don't tell me what to do, you son of a bitch. Todd says, LOL, not much. And Paul says, not the stoic is fantastic. It was, but I've never had the stoic. Like, I never had the base, the, just the stoic. I've had not the stoic. It was good. Anyway, if anybody out there that's watching wants to fire up a, uh, you know, a live show, feel free. I'm not going to, Chris. But you have a channel, Chris. You do. You totally have a channel. You want to fire one up? Redbeard's hammer. Maybe he fires one up. I don't know. Uh, four twenty says. Uh, I, I read his name four twenty, but there's three. There's three F. So four twenty says. Joe, you asked me which Sierra uh, Nevada is my favorite. He says Torpedo. And Torpedo is a great beer. Nice. That is a. Again, that's a beer I can't find relatively fresh. Uh, Eric Glover says online only for the Deschutes Black Butte. Uh, 30th anniversary. Eric Gilbert, do you, are you considering buying that? Did you buy that? I'm totally going to do that for the, my 300th review and first anniversary. I'm doing that in the abyss. I'm going to get shit face. I'm actually going to use Jeff No Jinx, uh, the bottle stopper, so I they, I can drink the rest later. Or maybe I'll just drink it all online and be fucking hammered. Todd says everyone can jump on his channel. Oh, wait. Yeah, Todd, settle down, buddy. I, I feel like peer pressure uh, in the comment section right now for Todd starting a channel, it should be a thing right now. Four, four twice says I can share my name if that's better. I mean, I know most of the names. Yo, that's up to you. It, it, it's your call, man. I, I don't mind calling you, you know, by your screen name. I mean, it's not, you know, it's it's totally up to you. Uh, but Jesse says my favorite Sierra is the Palo. I did just buy the newest release of the Bigfoot, and I have a barrel aged uh, 2013 Bigfoot. That might make for a fun, 
a fun live review, right? Bigfoot and barrel aged Bigfoot age six years. I don't know. Probably be pretty fun. Uh, Paul says, drink it all and pull the Paul. I'm enjoying every single second. of. I, I can pour the rest on. You want me to pour the rest? Let me pour the rest and even put the sediment in your bucket. Let's see what happens. It's not going to ruin it. If anything, it's going to make it taste beautiful. Look at that fucking amateur pour, boys. Look at that amateur pour all day long. Uh, Paul, only you can pull Paul, says Todd. I'd agree with this. I'd agree with this. Uh, J.O. says, that would be fun to see. Are you talking, J.O., about the Bigfoot? And the, well, the 2019 Bigfoot and then the 2013 Barrel Age Bigfoot. Uh, for 420, his name is, is that Christopher? 420, did you forget the R? Or Christoph? Uh, Paul says, I want to find a Barrel Age Yeti very badly. I've not seen Barrel Age Yeti. Didn't they just come out with a uh, new, was it, what was the latest Yeti they came out with? Wasn't it like a, uh, man, they came out with a new Yeti. I can't remember what it was. Uh, J.O. confirms that, yes, the Bigfoot and Barrel Age Bigfoot would be fun. Eric Gilbert says, I have to call the LCBO. It's listed but not in stock. Toronto trip, that's a that's a good extent. There, that's a good excuse to go there. Paul says 3.75 out of 5 now. Oh, yeah, with the sediment, it's shit. Let's try it. Oh, my God, it's terrible. Maybe I shouldn't have gave that uh, other one a 5 because I think it, with the sediment, it's fucking even better. Wow, that's so good. Paul says vanilla Yeti, Yeti was shit. Oh, Jeff says chocolate cherry Yeti was the newest one. Yeah, that's the one. I still think base Yeti's my favorite. Paul, I still have that 2012 chocolate Yeti that I brought down to your place and we never drank because we're assholes. But, um, and then uh, 420 says, nope, it's Kristoff. Like Kristoff, not Christopher. It's Kristoff. So Kristoff, okay. Well, at least I'll call you that from now on instead of 420, son. Son, son. Uh, PA says, Chris is not Paul. Jesus Christ, Paul. Chris laughs at that. Chris, you would laugh at that, buddy. Jesus Christ. Espresso Yeti was great. Yeah, the chocolate Yeti I had too, uh, cause I bought two bottles of that. I had the 2012, which I think we were both 2012. Uh, what was the, didn't they do an oatmeal one too? Oatmeal Yeti? Or am I... Completely buzzed on that. I think I feel like I'm buzzed. <laughs> I feel like I'm buzzed. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to probably do Sierra Nevada Bigfoot and the Barrel Age Bigfoot. I'm going to do the Abyss 30th and the, uh, or sorry, the Abyss and then the Black Butte 30th. I'm trying to think of other fun, like, do, like, I don't know. What's up? So, Todd, let me just make this small talk go to the side, buddy. Buddy, Todd, I'm pretty sure we're going to go with ASMR for a second, but I'm pretty sure. That uh, that Jeff wants all the 450 North, buddy. He wants the 450 North now. Paul said oatmeal and chai yeti. Yeah, I I don't think I don't feel like I'd want to drink chai yeti. I don't think I would. 420 says you could say K -K 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 Christoph. I could say that. Maybe I will do it like that. Um. Paul said, uh, Paul, uh, Chris says, I love how you're drinking the rest online. Yeah, I mean, because I usually I usually drink the rest of it unless it's not a great beer. Then put it this way. If I give something on my channel less than pretty much a 325, I end up usually not drinking it. It's just not worth the calories for me to drink a three out of five beer or even a 325. I just, I'm sorry. Like if, if I was to my ideal weight or whatever, I drink it all. But some of these beers are like two, 300 calories. I'm not drinking the fucking subpar beer, the rest of it. I know there's alcohol in it, but fuck it. I'm not doing I paid for it. So fuck you. Chris says goosebumps again. Uh, Craig says, I had the chai uh, Yeti last month. Did you review it, Craig? Because I don't remember that. And if so, if not, what'd you think about it? Uh, Christoph says, Bigfoot is great. Break out the good silverware for that one. Yeah, I'm going to chew the shit out of that. Uh, Paul says, I know I don't want to. Hmm. Yeah. Jesse says, you might hear Yeti, but I hear Jedi. Well, that's, you know, teach their own, Jesse. Uh, Paul says, Chris isn't Paul. Stop it, Paul. Paul. Uh, if, <laughs> Christoph says, LOL again at, Je at Bumpy Jesse. He says, another snacks guy in here. Snacks, funny and Africans. Come on. Listen, all I know is, um, well, I didn't ask this. What's everybody else fucking drinking in the comment section? Are you guys even drinking anything? I know it's Monday night, but am I, I'm not the only person drinking shit. Yeah, so Todd, uh, Todd, he probably sent uh, Jeff some of those 450 North buddies. He's got he's got all the Michigan barrel age goodness. Don't fuck around, man. Uh, 
Chris is drinking. Are you seriously drinking Lagunitas IPA, Chris? Christoph's drinking Guinea Fornies. Uh, oh, Jeff is drinking Weier, uh, Weierbacher Insanity. What do you think, Jeff? I, I want to say it's been a few years since I've had that. Todd says, LOL, will do. Paul says, Sierra Nevada Resilience IPA. What do you think? Uh, that's an awesome cause, Paul, the Resilience IPA, just because obviously raising all that money and all the profits, all of it, I think all of the profit go to uh, the you know the fire fund for all those uh, individuals. Um, I didn't pick one up, but I think I'm going to. Even if I don't review it, I'm just going to pick it up to support them. Uh, Craig says, was that our bottle share in Birmingham? It was fantastic, but I was hammered. So it wasn't really fantastic if you were hammered, Craig. I don't know. Chris says, was. What do you think of Lagunese IPA? And I, I, see, I don't think you're going to be a huge fan of Lagunese IPA even before you say anything, just because it's an older an older beer. JL says, Sprite, Lime, and Campari. Jesus Christ. Come on, J.O. Now, I know, J.O., you're all about you know equal equal opportunity for all, all liquors, all beer. You drink everything. I, I got it. Todd says, good choice to Chris for Lagunese IPA. Jeff says, thanks for whispering in Todd's ear. That's what I do, Jeff. Not only is this an ASMR beer channel, but I, you know, I nudge Todd. Here's the thing, just gonna say right now, Todd and uh, Jeff, you guys will make great trading partners. Todd can get the 450. You get all the great Michigan fucking crazy shit. So you should be fun. It should be really fun to, to exchange. Um, Chris says he's now on a sparkle puff. That's flying monkey sparkle puff. You pretty much need a strainer to drink it. And then you just eat the rest of the sediment because it's ridiculous. Uh, Ashley says, Sil uh, Fairweather Silky Oat Porter. How is that, Ashley? Because I, when we went to Fairweather, I'm hearing really good things about Fairweather now. When we went there, what, almost about 10 months ago, nine months ago, uh, their stuff was solid, but like people are really enjoying it. Uh, Paul says, malty, but okay, it's PA fresh now and it just showed up. What are you talking about, Paul? What are you drinking again? Did I, did I miss? Did I miss? Did I miss? Oh, yeah, the Resilience IP. What the fuck? Yeah, this is starting to hit. Um, Jeff says, Insanity was better than I expected. I gave it a 425. I, I remember really liking that up here. Um, Chris says he loved the Lagunitas IPA. Now, why did you pick up Lagunitas IPA, Chris? Was there a reason for that? Because that, that's crazy. Uh, Christoph says, as an aside, Grolsch makes a shit patrol bomb. <laughs> okay. I'll take your word for it. Uh, JL says, getting over a tummy bug, first alcoholic uh, beverage in a few days. I got you. Todd says, Jeff, great beer mail you sent show. Yeah, that was that was fantastic beer mail. Uh, Jesse says he hit a pothole, so I'm drinking cerveza. <laughs> and then Ashley says Fairweather is a must. So, so Ashley is Fairweather now in the LCBO because right they were only brewery only, as far as I remember, going back again nine ten months ago. But I, I I saw your haul and I imagine it wasn't from Fairweather and it was from the LCBO. Then again, I could be wrong and you went to Fairweather. Uh, Chris says, only IP on tap where I was. Fucking right. Where were you, Chris? I'd like to know where you were because this was the debate. I even mentioned this on Rod J's Saturday Night Stream, but like I feel like Lagunitas IPA is available everywhere. I don't know. Why am I going like this, but I just encompassing the entire earth? Uh, Ashley says, brewery only at the moment. Oh, so you picked them all up at the brewery, right? You were in the area? Okay. Yeah, I know they were doing. Ashley, have you or Chris or anybody heard about the new brewery um, in Niagara Falls that's doing apparently good hazy beer? I know, I know. We're, we're talking about national only stuff, but one of my untapped friends, he uh, he said there's a new brewery in Niagara, and I forgot exactly what the name of the brewery was, but uh, he was kind of really going nuts about their their New England style IPA, and I don't remember the name of it. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, where the, where the frig? Uh, counterpart brewing. Let's see if you guys answered with that. Yep, you said counterpart. There you, there you go. Uh, dr dropping off posters for the uh, Albino Rhino Beer Fest. No good hats in Niagara. Counterpart hazy. Have you went? You haven't went there yet, Ashley. I haven't seen any check-ins, but uh, they're apparently making some really good shit. I want to check them out at some point, since it's literally right over the brewery. Uh, Jeff says thanks, Todd and Joe. No, Jeff, dude, you're a good – here's the thing I'll say about Jeff too, Todd. Jeff sent first, and he was like, oh, man. He's like, I'm going to send you this stuff because it's stout season whatnot. And he's like, take your time on sending something back. I mean, I did send him something back relatively quickly. He's getting it tomorrow. But, like, Jeff's just a good dude. He's just a good all-around dude. Highly recommend trading with him. Um, 
no, not even none of that, like, oh, dollar for dollar, ounce for ounce. He's just like, I'm sending you some beer, send me some back. You know, not a big deal um, because that's that's how trading should be. Everybody should be cool, cool and chill and vibe. Now, if you're picking up shelf turns, send them to Jeff or Jeff's doing the same to you, obviously that'd be a problem, but nobody I know does stuff like that. Well, none of my friends anyway. Uh, Christoph says, I misread Niagara versus Nigeria. <laughs> that African coming out of me. Yeah, no, that would be completely different for sure. Um, uh, Chris says he's at Chuck's Roadhouse in Niagara Falls. Even a place called Chuck's Roadhouse has Lagunitas IPA on tap. How can you beat that? How can you beat that? Lagunitas IPA is so fucking good. Paul says, ever hear about the best brewery in Canada called Niagara Brewing Company? Joe loved it. Fuck you, Paul. Niagara Brewing Company sucked, all right? I have Ashley and Chris to confirm that they are terrible in the comment section. Todd says, I have no doubts uh, about Jeff. That's how I roll, too. I know you do. That's why I think you guys will have a good time trading. You get some some good shit you want to try, and so will he. The 450 North stuff is like I listen. The slushies, I don't even, I don't even know if they're beer anymore, but whatever. I mean, they're delicious. It's like a cocktail. What are you going to do? Uh, if you haven't checked out Ashley, I'll give a quick plug to Ashley Sex and Ashley's channel. Go check them out. Go sub. Um, I haven't watched his latest video, which was uh, about homebrewing specifically, about how easy it is. I believe the homebrew. I still need to watch it. But uh, he's doing he's doing a great job interacting with everybody because I do know that he did a vote on hops, which is now closed, but he's doing a, a homebrew with Polaris hops because that's what went out. But uh, if you haven't subbed to Ashley, go ahead. He's going to have great content. He already has better editing than I do. Then again, I don't edit, but then again, he would still be better than me even if I did edit, and that's because his wife's awesome. But uh, Ashley does awesome stuff. Um, let's see what we got going on here. Uh Chris says, Greg loves <laughs> NF Brewing Company. Yeah, he does. Jesus. Uh, Paul says, damn right he did, but not as much as Joe. Now, I'm pretty sure Greg liked it more than me. Uh, Alex says, Joe, you a beer festival guy? Thoughts on coming to the Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, coming to Charlotte uh, NC for an inaugural untapped beer festival? Yeah, I'm a huge beer festival guy. Uh, Alex, I want to see how the first year of that goes. I, I, there's a couple. I want to go to the Extreme Beer Fest from Beer Advocate. Sounds awesome all the time. I think that would be a fun uh, fest to go to because Charlotte's kicking out great beer, so you can make like an entire week of it. I wouldn't go, I don't think, to this year's, uh, but I think if it goes over well and they do another year, um, yeah, I'd, I'd totally be up for that. I think it'd be a good, good ass, uh, good ass vacation slash beer festival for sure. Jesse from Bumpy Road says a video is coming up from Joe's mail he sent me. I'll be curious to see Jesse what you think about the other half stuff. Um, I have a feeling you're not going to be blown away by it just because I know I know how you are, but I just wanted to let you try some. That's all. Uh, Christoph says, my son is reviewing his own drink, some weird beverage called pomegranate in a weird bottle. That's my boy. Probably get more views than any of our beer stuff, <laughs> Christoph, because that's how it goes. Todd says, untapped beer festival. Yes, please. I, I, uh, so, Alex, do they plan on doing it in different locations each year, or is it just going to be one location every? They're the same location every year because I feel like on tap would do probably rotating. Are you going to it? Oh, you are. He says a report back on like you know. Yeah, let me know, man. I I'd be curious to get like an actual impression. Uh, Ashley says I appreciate Joe and everyone else that has subbed to me. Big cheers to you all. Yeah, you well, you deserve it. Here's the thing: anybody that's a beer tuber that's commenting right now, if you haven't checked out Paul from PA Brew News, even though he listens to metal in the background and they're completely unwatchable videos. He's still a great guy with great content. Go check him out. Um, you also have uh, Jesse from Bumpy Road uh, Brewery if you want to check out some. You know, he does a lot of local tastings and homebrew stuff, but he does a great job with them. And he's probably the most one of the most honest beer tubers, along with Paul, that I know. They just basically state their opinion. They don't do it for – they're not looking to get crazy subs. They're not looking to get free beer. They're looking to tell you what they think of the beer. Uh, Craig from Kent Beer Reviews, one of my favorite uh, UK – beer reviewers period just a great dude very low key and just like just down to earth and then uh chris from off the 10th um great production value and his palette has evolved from a baby palette to a preteen palette to a teen palette now i think he's in the adult range like he's in the adult palette range which is insane and uh he has a physics machine if you don't know what a physics machine is it basically turns like every beer almost into a nitro beer and he occasionally busts that out and uh, i have a um <clears throat> I have a hand in his Will It Physics series by just screaming Will It Physics over and over. But yeah, he does a great job. The Party Source, J.O. and Amos and all the rest of the guys there, they review everything from beer to wine to straight up liquor, cigars, everything. If you want an all-encompassing, um, basically liquor 
channel. I they got have over a thousand subs and it's well deserved. Am I missing anybody? Eric Gilbert doesn't have a channel. Neither does Todd. Neither does uh, Jeff. No Jinx. But they're all great dudes in their own right. So, so is uh, Christoph from 420. I've just for the first time I think I've seen him on uh, Rajay's uh, Saturday Night Chat. But he's great, man. He's seems like a really good dude, down to earth. He is, uh, I believe, from South Africa. And he's li li living in Vegas, which is kind of that's crazy. That's a crazy, uh, crazy change, I think. But awesome, yeah. Definitely check out all those guys. They all do great stuff. Uh, cheap plug for Craig, Kent Beer Reviews. He's doing, he won a, a an Instagram uh, giveaway and he gets all the Monkish beer. They're the new hyped, not even new hyped. They've been around for a couple of years, but they're the hype brewery in California that does New England style IPs apparently extremely well. But if you're not in California, you have to kill individual to get your hands on stuff. So it makes sense that Craig over in the UK is going to be reviewing them. Just saying. Paul unsubbed to Ashley Sexton because that's what you do, apparently, if you're Paul. Uh, <laughs> uh, Christoph says, one of my mates said, it, pronounce it North Carolina. Carolina. I don't I, I know. That is not correct, but I'm glad you got me to say it. Uh, Alex says, no idea. Was just blown away it was announced here. I'm in Charlotte, so let me know if you all need a place. Well, thank you very much, Alex. I totally will hit you up if that ever becomes the case, man. And we'll definitely hang out if I ever come down there, man. Go go to some places and you can show me all the good spots. Uh, Christoph says, it's made by blind monks in an underground abbey on another planet. I want I want mate at Kent. Interesting. Alex says, being held at Panther Stadium and a lot of big boys already announced founders, modern times, Weldworks, and many, many. That's a fucking, the modern times and a Weld, especially Weldworks. I haven't had anything. Uh, JL says, nitro beer, question mark. Uh, the physics doesn't necessarily nitro it, but it gives you the creamy mouthfeel that you get from like a nitro beer. It's kind of weird. Uh, Chris says, I wonder if Fuller's would physics. Yeah. Yeah, it would. And then, uh, uh, Christoph says darts and gars, eh? <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. That was one of the best. That was one of the best. Uh, Jo says, thank you for the shout out. Same thing with, uh, Chris says, thanks for the sub to bumpy. Uh, Trish one sip at a time said, Thought I'd throw off the mail count, uh, mail count and toss in a cheers. Good live, been popping it out. Thank you, Trish. Thank you to throw off the uh, the mail count there because it was kind of high, you know, 100%. Um, Christoph says, my vids are bikes, concerts, turbo BMWs, and video games with Sun. I might do a Telsa review with my car. I'm going to check. I'm going to check out your – I'm going to – I'm subbing right now, 420. I'm subbing right now. I didn't call you 420, but I'm calling you Christoph. And then Chris says, blowing up sons, Joe. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just where I'm at. And then Joe says, where are you located, the Beer Patrol? I'm in western New York, J.O., to be more specific, another northern suburb of uh, Buffalo, New York. So I'm actually 20 minutes from the Ontario border uh, border in Canada. I can 20 minutes, I can be in Canada, but I don't go that often. Uh Christoph says he's in South Canada. That's kind of what Western New York is. Here's the thing about Western New York here. The beer of choice, macro beers in Western New York, Labatt Blue. I'll leave it at that. Jesse says Joe is in New York, upper New York. Western New York, Western New York, Jesse. I don't even know what would uh, clarify as upper New York, honestly, at this point. I guess like Albany is kind of like the central New York and then Syracuse. Western New York pretty much starts at Rochester West. Then from that point, you're kind of in central Syracuse and Albany. Uh, Eric, Gil Eric Gilbert says, hacking darts, son. Always hacking darts. Drunken One says, my computer is running so slow. Drunken One, restart that shit. Don't, isn't it 9 o'clock? You usually have the uh, computer computer start. Chris says, you don't come over enough. That's, that's true. I got to refill my, uh, <laughs> my candy bar haul there, uh, Chris, at some point. Peanut butter Henry bars, my one weakness. Uh, Christoph says, I'm on a Galaxy S10 running a treat. Nice. That's the, So you got the new phone, huh? That's pretty sweet. Um, J.O. says, I ended up in Connecticut near New London about once a year. How close is that? Not close. See, that's that's the one. Uh, let me take another sip of this as it's been sitting here. That's the one thing. Oh, I got a thumbs down. I'm into it. Um, that's the uh, one thing about... Um, New York, J.O., when, when they start talking about, you know, I'm in New York. New York City is like seven, seven and a half hours away. So when people are like, oh, you're you're close to New York City. I'm actually close. I can drive to Detroit. I can drive to Cleveland. I can drive to probably Cincy and Louisville. Or not Cincy and Louisville. Cincy and um, 
you know, on the border since the uh, to Ohio and Kentucky quicker than I can drive to New York City, believe it or not. Uh, then we have Trish says, Drunken One, good to see you alive today. Did Drunken One get a little bit hammered last night? I mean, that's a silly question, right? He says, oh, yeah, feeling a bit rough. That would be that would be what it is. Chris says, all the peanut butter O'Henry is now a go-to. Nice. Uh, Brandon shows up and says, go Bruins. Motherfuckers, Brandon. Yeah, your team's doing it. Uh, what was the score of tonight's game? Because aren't they on like a 19 or 20 point like streak? I don't know. It's crazy. I'm jealous. What are you going to do? Uh, we have, who else we got here? Paul says, I'm probably closer to Connecticut than you are, Joe. Probably, honestly. Uh, Christoph says, damn, Joe, that brew is a prawn. I want to get in there. <laughs> Do you? Do you? Yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to close it down. It's been over an hour. Uh, I have 17 people watching. Maybe I shouldn't close it down. I don't know. You guys enjoy chatting for a bit? I don't know. I'm going to have timestamps for the people watching the replay, so they should sh survive at some point. Yeah, so, uh, J.O., when you go up to Connecticut, yeah, you're probably still fucking six, seven hours away from me. So if you ever go up to Cleveland or Erie, Pennsylvania, or something like that, you're probably two, three hours away from me, which isn't bad. At least I think. Uh, I sub to you, uh, Christoph. I sub to you to check out your uh, I have to check out your uh, your content. Someone took away the thumbs down, so did they accidentally hit thumbs down? I don't know. I appreciate you taking away the thumbs down. Thank you very much. I, th I feel like someone wanted to go thumbs up and just accidentally hit the thumbs down, but, you know, I listen, you get a thumbs down, you get a thumbs down. Uh, Christoph says, Joe is the comment master. Uh, Ashley's taking off. He says, got to go for the evening. Good evening, Joe and everyone watching. Take it easy, Ashley. Uh, Chris and I are going to review Ashley Sexton's homebrew at some point. Um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, Jesse says, cheers, Joe. A nice live again. Thank you very much, uh, Jesse. I do appreciate it. Um, Alex says, we'll have to jump on the, these. Oh, he retracted his message. I don't know if he was spelling things wrong, but he was, he was, he was, he retracted. He said he'd have to jump in on live streams. <laughs> Alex, if you type that again, that would be nice. Uh, Chris, we need to do, we need to do Ashley's homebrew at some point, honestly, in the near future. J.O., take it easy, Ben. Hey, J.O., so the beer mail uh, for you will be showing up at um, we'll be showing up at Rod's tomorrow. So I'm hoping he can get you those beers by the weekend so they're not too old. All the beers are less than a month old as we speak. So, you know, it, a week or two is not going to make a huge difference. But let me know what you think about them. You guys don't have to review them, but if you do, that's cool too. Uh, Alex says there's a typo. He had to get rid of it. Uh, Chris says, great live show, Joe. Review Ashley's beer real soon. We will. Eric shows up. Eric Lyons fan. Check him out. Great content. He says, what up, brother? Christoph, Joe, ever heard of El Maza? It's a great snappy beer from Lebanon. I have not. It's the first time. And Eric says, you're not on the big TV this time, Joe. Thank God, Eric, because that's, that, you know, in, it's good for you. It's really good for you. You don't want to see this mug on a live live uh, 50, 50 inch television. That's not ideal for anybody, honestly. Uh, JL says, cool. Yeah, no, I hope you enjoy them, JL. If you don't, whatever, I'll be looking forward to your guys' opinion. Uh, Alex says, we'll have to log in, onto these more. Y'all are a blast. Feel free to follow my beer, uh, beer escapades. So escapades, beer escapades on Instagram, Alex. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll follow you. you know, I, I, I usually follow back people that are interested, uh, well, are interesting to me, whatever content they have. So yeah, I'll definitely check you out, Alex, and, uh, give me a follow back if you want to. I don't post anything, so you don't really have to. Eric Gilbert says, cheers, excellent half-ass live son. That's what you get from the Beer Patrol. Nothing but half-assing all the time. Uh, and, yeah, I think we're going to shut it down. Christoph says, Eric, keep that snow machine warm, eh? <laughs> Motherfuckers. So I want to thank each and every person that showed up in the comment section. Uh, I just want to thank you guys because that's awesome. I, I didn't expect fucking 12 to 15 people to watch, honestly. So I do appreciate you guys taking time out of your evening to check out uh, my, my content, my channel, chatting back and forth. I'm going to try to do these every Monday, try to do beers that you guys can get, and uh, we'll keep it going. Uh, check out everybody's channel. I already mentioned them 15, 20 minutes ago. Uh, thanks to Trish, one sip at a time, for breaking up the monotony of an all-male <laughs> an all male comment section. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Chris ends the uh, entire stream by saying the one word they always say on Beer Analysis 101, and I'm not going to say it, Chris. 
because this is a classy stream. I have not I have not sweared at all on the stream. Go back, watch the content. I didn't swear at all. That's how I roll. Oh man, hang on. Before I go, I was gonna just close it down. We two more people show up here a little bit. Earth says in for proof. So Earth is making sure that we acknowledge that he did show up to this. And he's the entire planet, and he knows what the fuck's going on. So Earth's here for proof. And then Richie Z says, hey, Joe, I was late coming in, but cheers, buddy. Thanks a lot, Richie, for showing up. It's fine, man. Uh, I don't expect anybody to watch the replay, but if you do, I will put timestamps in so you don't have to watch me just ramble for the last half an hour because that was more about you know the, the people here live commenting and interacting, going back and forth. Christoph says, cheers, Joe. Glad I could make it. Have a lecker evening. I, I get a, I, That means great. Hope it means great. And then Eric Gilbert says something I won't read. And Chris says, oh, Chris still isn't Paul. And that's how we're going to shut this down. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Until next Monday, where I review two more beers. I don't know what they're going to be, but they should be fun. Anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by. Until the next one, cheers.